those who are not mujassima or mushabbiha, those who are not anthropomorphic, anthropomorphists, from Athenians. The reason why we made that distinction is that in this day and age, there are many people who call themselves Athenian, but in reality they are people who, are, who have anthropomorphic views. And we I mean, explain the reason for that is that historically there's been a trend that is not representative of the Athenians or the Hanbalis, if you want to call them. But that trend now has come from Akhnobat. Yes? Akhnobat. Uh, and especially in this day and age, I asked you all the different sects and their beliefs, and you guys put your hands up when it came to um, the use of, uh, of the Shriya, or giving Allah Godly attributes. Pretty much all of you uh, had your hands up, as that has been something that you guys have come across and you've seen before. Very interesting. And now we know, well, we'll explore semester two why that is, why, is that, why, is that, why, is that, why that's the case. We spoke about Iman, we spoke about the ayah, the verse of Hadith and the Quran, the Amdi Shadiha, that gave you an outlook of understanding of Allah that's far from what Allah's reality is. And we spoke about Tafwil and Tawil and so on and so forth. And we moved away from that after we realized that, that, that the greatest number of Muslims from the time of, of, of Abu Hassan Ash'ari and Abu Mansur al Nadri have been followers of those two schools when it comes to Aqidah. And that has been the benchmark for Ahl Sunnah al Jamaat. That has been the benchmark. When it comes to Aqidah, historically, that's been the benchmark. And people can say what they want to say, but historically, that is there. It's fact, you can't hide from it, you can pretend it's not there, you can, you can criticize the Ash'aris and the Manfudis and have all these false accusations. Historically, the scholars agree on these two schools, and we'll see it as an as well, okay? The non ball from them. But then we moved on to Bidra. And we spoke about Bidra, and we realized that Bidra, contrary to what people have been taught, contrary to what people have been led to believe, Bidra has been broken out to good and bad. We still have the Salaf, we still have the Rabbi Muqtab, Ali viewed Bid'ah, we saw how Imam Shafi viewed Bid'ah, we saw how the Sahaba viewed the issue of innovation, Muhammad Gilgi. We did a lot and we realized that the four schools, pretty much, uh, Jamhur, and we have Bid'ah, and we broke with that to Buddha Bad. The idea that Bid'ah is all bad is a minority opinion that goes back to Ibn Hazaniya and Imam Shafi to two notables from that particular view. Okay, and then we can then talk about Al Izna Abdul Salam and his breakdown of Bid'ah. Those slides are things you're going to have to go back to and look at from time to time. There are things in there, you're going to ask me questions, and the answers in the slides. Any question on this topic from that one, go back to the slides. If you can't find the answer, then ask me. Don't come to me and you haven't looked at the slides, but I'll say to you, go back and look at the slides. I'm going to spend hours and hours and hours and hours to come back to ask me a question that's on the slides. The slides are there. So go back, look at it. After that, any question, if you ask a question, you can't find the answer to it because it's not in the slide, it's not in the slide, come to me. Don't come to me first without looking at the slides. Alright? Play it. Now we're going to move on to Ihsan. And this is a noble topic, it's an honorable topic, I am not worthy to be talking about this particular topic, uh, it's, mashallah, it is, and the, the peak of our faith is Ihsan, the peak of our faith is Ihsan, I am far from uh, uh, being an example of this, which I wish I was, somebody has to talk to you about it, this is I'll try my best, inshallah. You know, do not look at me as being an example of, of Ihsan or of the Western in this context or in any context, inshallah. Okay. Play it. When are you wrong? Question one. Hassan. This is the There's quite a lot to get through today, alright? So I'll try my best, but keep up. How has Ihsan been understood, preserved, and transmitted by the vast majority of scholars? But several people over the course of the semester have asked me questions about this. Alright? Flaha is from the most notable and Hassan is not here. I've asked him and Hassan. He was Hassan, I've asked several times. Alright, he's not here. 
you know, there's a reason why I left, left it now at the time of life. There are certain things you have to understand first before you get to this particular topic. For those who are you being patient with me, you will be rewarded today by very detailed understanding of the question that you asked about uh, more than once. How to recognize who is an authority and who is not when it comes to Islam? If you've been paying attention, this question I get to answer. I've answered what, you know, to how Islam has been understood, I've answered how Iman has been understood, I'm going to answer how Ihsan is going to be understood, but I've yet to answer this question. This will be the last class of the semester, this one. I've left it to them because once you know Iman, Islam, once you know Islam, Iman, Ihsan, and the reality of them, then I can tell you who is an authority in your subjects. If you do not know what the subject is about, then how are you going to know who is an authority? So I've left it at the end. By then you'll know exactly what to look for. Alright? So that's been the last class of the semester. Allah gave you life a life that we live longer, inshallah. Everyone follows someone, someone's interpretation is too so. Are they qualified? What makes them so and how do we judge? Right, Jibra Hadith. Are you familiar or should you read it? Huh? Does anybody want to, if you think you have to read that, what would, essentially this whole semester has been explained in the hadith. Familiar with it? We've got Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. Ihsan is the worship of Allah. So if you see him, if you not see him, he never rescues you. So hadith is Sahih. Why is that? Recap. Allah in his wisdom has accomplished his preservation in the Quran. By the traditional scholars, he has sent at each level of the religion. The level of Islam has been preserved and conveyed to us by the Imams of Sharia, the sacred law, and its ancillary disciplines, madhabs, schools of law. The level of Iman by the Imams of Aqidah, the tenets of faith, Ashari's Maturidis, and those amongst the Ahlul Hadith who did Tawfi, the fully Hadith. Correct. The level of Ihsan, to worship Allah as though you see him, by the Imams of Tazkiyah. By the Imams of Tazkiyah. So similarly, you look at Fiqh and Madai historically, you look at the schools of Aqidah historically, now we want to look at Ihsan historically. And when you get past all these labels that you probably heard about, all that rubbish that you find that go online, you're going to look at it from an academic perspective and historical perspective. And then you can go back and have a look at it yourselves in more detail. But there are Imams of Tesfiyah, scholars of Tesfiyah. Tesfiyah is purification. Purification of what? One's soul. Okay? Now, this is a simple diagram or a breakdown of the Hadith. The three dimensions of our deen Islam, Shahada, five prayers, Zakat, fasting, and Hajj. Iman, belief in Allah, his angels, the scriptures, the messengers, the last day, and destiny. Ihsan, to worship Allah as if you see him, and if you cannot, then know that he sees you. Right, Islam is being presented by who? By who? By what? Madai. Ah, hands up. The four madhabs. The four madhabs. Iman, and being presented by who, sisters? Yeah, what which scholars? And 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 the third one? Uh, which echo is? Uh, yeah, yeah, which ones? The, the ones we claim today or the ones? No, no the, the one there. Okay. Anybody follows the real echo, it's not the echo is with one stuff that we're doing. Okay, which is the and yeah, so By the Surya of the soul. Jinnah means Surya. Alright? I'll put it in red so you know the difference. So, Ihsan, to worship Allah as if you see Him, and if you cannot know that He sees you, just like Islam has been presented by the four schools, how do you understand how to pray or uh, uh, give zakah, fast, and the hajj? 
to the four schools. How do you understand Allah is aimed at the scriptures through the schools of Aqeelah? But how did you get to the states to worship Allah as if you see him? That's not going through the four methods, nor is it going through the schools of Aqeelah. They are important, nonetheless, without which you can't see Allah in this particular understanding. But the subject matter that deals with how do you get to the state? Give me the book and that's it. Ridiculous. No. You can't pick up a book and all of a sudden you can worship it. Because if that was the case, much of Allah in it. It'd be very easy, but it's not. It's very difficult. It's a lifelong struggle. And the subject matter that deals with Ihsan is the soul. Alright? It's the soul. It's historical. So, what do you know about the soul or Sufism? Hands up. Don't all shout at once. I can imagine the, uh, the comments section are on fire today. Oh, yeah. No, you watch the World Cup. Watch the World Cup, man. Shut up. Listen to Um, Play it. Stop the sisters first. I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, I forget your name. You're not in here, no? Ah. Sophia. You know when you sit over there, so I, I remember people where they are. I don't know your name, Sophia. It means it means it's a third. Sophia, this means that. Well, tell me what you know. There's no wrong answer, so I don't think so. Tell me what you know. I don't think. That's good enough. This is the next year. What's your name? Maria. Maria. Tell me what you know. Okay. It's more like about spirituality. Spirituality, okay. Uh, any Um, I know Sufism is more, about, or like I said, spirituality, but they have different, as far as um, different like methods of embracing their spirituality. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's more like physical movement. Okay. Uh, to put it generally, but it's just. There's been a, like, it's related to um, bid'ah like the last one. A lot of people like I've heard say um, that what they do is bid'ah. Like um, some people say it's a more sophisticated form of uh, worship. Okay. I could argue. Interesting. Ah, uh, I don't to the point four. Um, I think the different ways you do it is that when you follow different dialogues. Dialogues, yeah. Um, I don't. I know one of them is called the Jishri or the Shishri. Um, I don't know. Is that a Jishri? Yeah. 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 From my understanding, is it um, they, they get they try to get closer to Omar, but 
I get close to the Wadi of Allah, the Wadi, the friends of Allah. Okay, say that again louder. Um, they try to get closer to Allah by becoming closer to the Wadis of Allah. What's the Wadi of Allah? Uh, in English. It is, either, is it friend or not friend? Friend of Allah. Friend. Interesting. Uh, then, the microphone's behind you. So, as far as I understand, Sufism and Salafism are uh, cutting from the Hassan and the world, and just to separate yourself, trying to find yourself and to connect with Allah in a special way, so so that the world doesn't stand between you and Allah. <laughs> okay, okay. That should be written down. <laughs> okay, interesting. Uh, anybody else want to add anything? All right. Is it, um, is it like, it's a, a big part of it is like having good manners. A big part of it is having good manners. Alright. Do you want to add something? Yeah. What's that? They do a lot of dhikr. Anything else? Anything negative? Oh, yeah, they deal with the nefs, the ego. Mashallah. Anything else? Um, with, with Sufism, it's something like I've uh, obviously come across, like many others have. I've, I've How have you come across it? It's been taught in religious educations in uh, high school, and okay. I believe in colleges too. But it's something I've just um, separated myself from, try to stay away from, because um, obviously I, I tr myself just try to keep to um, I, I'd, I'd say pure form of Islam, but I don't want to say that I'm right because I could be wrong. But um, I don't want to dwell too deep into the unknown territories, if that makes sense. Um, there, I have seen like a lot of, um, I don't know if it is Sufism, but it's been labeled as Sufism where people are dancing um, in circles. Um, with a certain attire, um, but personally, I haven't really looked into it out of fear of being misguided. Okay, mashallah. You guys look like Tamina, I don't know your name. Mashallah. Anything, there's no right or wrong, just what you know what we're talking about. I do know that they, I don't think they have a way that they prioritize um, being in the best, like they try to, not the Muslim, but Muhammad, say it. They try to like, um, copy and like, be the code, like, have this company with Muhammad, so I'll also. Anything else? I uh, I've come across some people who ascribe themselves to Sufism. I can't uh, Is it here or back home? Back home. Uh, who ascribe themselves to uh, Sufism and they do very questionable things or say very questionable things. Uh, things like they don't have to observe solar anymore, uh -huh. that they've reached some level. Yeah. Did they say that to you? They have not said, I've not seen someone say that to me, uh -huh. but it's something that's very common. I've been said a lot about them. Okay. Uh, you have instances where some of them uh, they do what they call khalwa, where they uh, abstain, they listen to themselves, they don't go for jumwa, they don't go for as in, they separate themselves for, for a long period of time and they aspire that as a form, they aspire that as a form of worship. Uh, 
we also had some of them, as in, that's also been related from some of them saying very questionable things like saying they went for for Hajj while they were in Khalva, as in, like, that's a very, very strange thing. Like a miracle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Interesting. 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 Jermaine, you want to add anything or? Yeah? Perfectly so. All of them? So you, you were going to say all of that. <laughs> I believe this. I believe this. But it, it's not that. It's interesting for me to know how much you know. And I'm surprised you a lot, a lot more. Well, I shouldn't be surprised, actually. Uh, you know a lot more than I would say the average Muslim would know. It's quite it's an easy, an easy ride for me, as this topic can be a ride. Uh, inshallah, what your journey to all Allah. Hey, Ah, Susan, what do you know? Nothing. Oh, God. See how many ideas have I got? I'm not mind reader, but it's kind of fun. I think I get an understanding of what people say here. Thank you, Rita. That was said as well. But now I know that there's such a thing as good as I. Last and I think someone kind of touched on that as well. Not fair enough. Well, you know, she's that cheap. That's the rough dancing, can you imagine? They have strange practices. Must be uh, alluded to. They do think of lively. Can you mention that one? Chanting and dancing. You guys mention that one? They have different groups. They have mentioned that or alluded to it. They are not in the green, but in the blue circle. See previous lectures. I think they are not, people claim they are not Sunni Orthodox. But they are outside Orthodoxy, and they are, are innovators. That's the claim. These are all claims. All right. But anyway, this is enough. So, questions. Where did the Tasawwuf come from? What role does it play in the religion of Islam? And most importantly, what is the command of Allah about it? Alright? This is all taken from Shaykh Nur Fatima. I've just taken it from both slides. So, Ihsan, if we're going to translate it as excellence or so forth, all means the same thing in reality. Bismillah. Ihsan, excellence, and so forth. You worship Allah as if you see Him, and if you cannot, then know that He sees you. Easy said than done, cannot be achieved through reading a book or hearing a lecture. Why? Why? Why do you not just pick up a book and then you just, you know, you worship Allah to his skin? That's a high status, right? I am convinced most students on campus, right? <clears throat> They will talk, if they talk about it, they don't understand it correctly. And I would say that a lot of them do not know how spiritual our faith is. And I, I said a lot of conviction, a lot of experience dealing with students. I, from what I've seen, a lot of Muslim students do not understand how spiritual their faith is or how spiritual, how spirituality even uh, uh, exist in my faith. And that's my own what I see all the time. Okay? And again, you may disagree. You're welcome to disagree with me. I think a lot of students, I'm just picking on students for you guys I work with sometimes, a lot of students are on autopilot when it comes to their faith. Autopilot means that they just pray, do the Lord, go on. You love her, you wish her, from all our goals, the past, it's all robotic. It's all outward. And there's nothing wrong with that. But some, most times, students do not feel anything. If you're honest with yourselves, you'll say, yes, that's true, I don't feel it. When people leave Islam, as some will, one of the reasons they say that, they don't feel anything. Because if they felt spiritual, they wouldn't leave the religion. When people become Muslim, they become Muslim because they feel something spiritual. 
My question to you guys and girls and those listening, how many of you feel your faith? Feel spiritual? At the highest level, this. When you pray, no, no, if you pray, so Allah can see you. And if you, if you can't, no, Allah can see you. When you're by yourself, at night, worship this. Worship by the way of Prophet Salah, that's, that's secular, right? A secular, you know, secular religion or state. Our religion is 24 7. You have angels writing down things all the time. Religion is not restricted to your actual worship. They're important, but not a lot more than that. The point is, you. When you walk in, when you walk in, when you woke up, when you went to sleep, you in your classes, even right here, right now, this is after worship, you're studying. Huh? But are you doing it in this way? You're not alive, to be honest. But why can you not just pick up a book? And you get this guy. Read a book, and I promise, oh, now I'm good. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over his blessed life transformed the companions into the best generation that had ever lived. They achieved the spiritual state mentioned in the hadith. Those generations after them also achieved this, both to the present day. Transformative power of Islam. How has this been achieved historically? We are looking at how do we transform ourselves. Because what we're looking at is a transformation from not seeing Allah in this context to worshiping Allah. That's a transformation. The Prophet transformed the Sahaba over the years that he was with them. Yes? He took Sahaba and he transformed them. This act of transformation of Sahaba, alright, the scholars of the Sawaf, that's what they're about. How do you think you? Right, this rough, uh, uncut diamond, and how do you polish it? And that's what it's about. When you can polish, and you worship as you see Allah, and if you don't, know that Allah sees you. But how has this historically been done? It's not done through reading books. It's been done through something else. So we're going to get beyond labels and what is the soul. This is the Ihsan, Tazkiyah, Tarbiyah, Tasawwuf are all used interchangeably. Right? Historically, Tazkiyah, Tarbiyah, Tasawwuf, Ihsan all means the same thing. <coughs> Historically. Nowadays, people you know, use it in a different way, but essentially, for the purpose of the night, it means the same thing. Go. Three times, three times all mean the same thing. You worship Allah as if you see Him. The Salaf is a historical term that has been used by the scholars. In English, Sufism. Greatly misunderstood in this age due to ignorance of some who claim to practice it and ignorance of those that criticize it. And ignorance of those that criticize it. This last point of point, greatly misunderstood. Alright, the fact that I could pull out you know, everything you said before you tell me I want you to read down. Shows that in your walking good mindset are in this topic. Greatly misunderstood in this age due to due to two things, we could argue. Ignorance of some who claim it. Shaka. Some 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 of them are ignorant, not all. And ignorance of those who criticize it. Right? So of those who practice it, some are ignorant, and those who criticize it. Unfairly, mostly are they yeah, are in themselves. Okay? Unfairly. Let's first examine the soul from a historical perspective and see what it is, what it does, and what have scholars said about it. So we're gonna look at it from a historical perspective in the same way we did fit, in the same way we did Iman, in the same way we're gonna we're gonna do Ihsan. Alright? The soul, Ihsan. The science of Tasawwuf was not known by that name during the Prophet time. Similarly, to sciences like Hadith terminology, Hadith as no doubt, etc. 
So if he wasn't known by that name during the time, the Sahaba did not know the word Tasawwuf. But you know what? They didn't know the word Sahih Hadith. They didn't know the word Ahira in the way you understand it. They didn't know uh, Nasir or Masuk in the way you understand it. They didn't know Usul al Fiqh in the way you understand it. So this thing that oh, it didn't exist by name, if that's the criteria, you must well get rid of all of the sciences that we have this term. Its reality was namely that of Ihsan. So the reality of that was Ihsan. And that with Allah and the Kabbalah, worship Allah as a museum. That's the reality. The difference of opinion of where the name originated from. Like Muslims and Ethiopian schools, it became more developed and systemized into a science that was taught and practiced in all of the major Islamic institutes around the world. What does that tell you? The last part. Um, for me, it suggests that there's like a need for it. So, for example, before there was a need, there's a requirement for the Madhabs and the Aqidah, and that's only there was a, there was a need because there's a lot of confusion, so it needs to be systemized, and um, sort of like hierarchy, I suppose you could say. So there's no people that you know uh, be confused or take stuff that are t t have different meanings. You know? So it's like a sort of like a law, for example. Excellent. What does this say about that last sentence, the last sentence, the last line of the paragraph? Muhammad. You guys are making me hungry for the. Sorry, man. Yeah, I'm not asking you. Bismillah. Ah. Should we do it? You sure? Yeah, I'm talking about it. Next time. Inshallah. Sorry, man. Enjoy. The majority vote. Who said that? Major Islamic institutes. Major Islamic institutes around the world, right? And they taught it, I'm practicing it, historically, from east to west. And we'll talk more about that as we go on. This is part one, part two will be next week. So some questions will not be answered tonight, but no doubt they'll be answered next week, inshallah. All right, the origin of the word so wolf. Historian Ibn Khaldun notes in his Mukaddimah, this knowledge, the soul, is a branch of the sciences of sacred law that originated in the Ummah. From the first, the way of such people had also been considered the path of truth and guidance by the elders of the Jerusalem and its lofty laws. Of the companions of the Prophet, وسلم, those who were taught by them and those who came after them. It basically consists of dedication to worship, total dedication to Allah Most High, disregard for the binary and ornament of the world, abstinence from the pleasure, wealth, and prestige sought by most men, and retiring from others to worship alone. You all tonight said those things, right? Shaka says some of those things, Annie says some of those things, Luqman says some of those things. Uh, who else? Hands up. MashaAllah, he says some of those things as well. That's essentially it. So, okay? Dedication to Allah. Total dedication to Allah Most High. Disregard for the finery and ornaments of the world. And Zuhud, or asceticism, uh, you mentioned. Absence from pleasure, wealth, and prestige sought by most men and women. Okay? And retiring from all this to worship Allah alone, which is called Khalwa, as Shaqir had mentioned. All those things are things which did nothing wrong. All right? That's the reality. That's the reality. This was the general rule among the companions of the Prophet and the early Muslims. Yeah, they did those things. That was an example of that. But when involvement in this worldly, in this worldly thing became widespread from the second Islamic century onwards, and people became absorbed in worldliness, those who wanted to worship came to be called Sufiya, or people of the soul. That's Ibn Khaldun, famous traveler and writer, uh, uh, who says in his Al Muqaddama, uh, and this is very early on in Islamic history, this is perhaps where we can start to look at the word and the origins of the word soul. That Ibn Khaldun is somebody who is reliable uh, and people look at. Okay? So, as Luqman mentioned, it was very normal 
الصحابه دي بيقولوا لك لكن الصحابه بيشرك الله اس 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 Gain this experience of worshiping God as the Creator, right? And it developed into a subject, and that subject now is called the soul, the soul. As for the origin of the word soul, it may well be from Sufi, a person who does the soul, which seems to be etymologically prior to it. The earliest mention of of the term was by Hassan al-Basri. Died in 110 years after the Hijra, and he quoted Yosef. Hassan Basri, you mentioned before. Do you remember this? In the slides. Was he one of the people that, pe- uh, that the people came to him for fatwas? No. Yeah. Oh, he's a guy who beefed with the other guy because he had a problem with it. <laughs> he had a problem. Yeah, he had a theological right. problem with it. Right. 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 I saw a Sufi session on today to the Kaaba and often came back to him, but he would not accept it. Hassan al Basri, very early on, where is he? Can you see it? 110. That word was known amongst the righteous and the Salaf. Very early on, the word. That's okay. He didn't say there are innovators, he didn't say this or that. He didn't say anything about that term. It was a term, uh, historically, the word Sufi had been a term that had been known to praise somebody. And we look at the historical biographies of scholars written by Imam um, Madahi, who is Ibn Taymiyyah's student, in his book, Sir Alam al Buddha. He meant when he, when he talks about the background of scholars, in Aqidah of this and the fifth of this, and the Aqidah of Sawwuf, historically. So it's never been looked as a term, a derogatory term, it's been used as a term of medh, of praise. So what is this group? The best definition of both a Sufi and his way. Certainly, one of the most frequently quoted by Master of Sufi is from the Sunnah of the Prophet, who said, Allah Most High says, he who is hostile to a friend of mine, I declare war against. My slave approaches me with nothing more beloved to me than what I have made obligatory upon him. And my slave keeps drawing nearer to me with voluntary works until I love him. And when I love him, I am his hearing with which he hears, his sight with which he sees, his hand with which he seizes, and his foot with which he walks. If he asks me, I will surely give it to him. And if he seeks refuge in me, I will surely protect him. Fath al Bari, who remembers Fath al Bari, the book? Who knows Fath al Bari? Fath al Bari is a commentary on Sahih Bukhari, which is written by Ibn Hajar al Salam, which must be. If you look at this hadith and break it down into stages, alright? He who is hostile to a friend, and Allah mentioned Wali, friend of mine, I declare war against him. So Allah has friends, those who are close to him and he is close to them, his friends. Allah, I mean, Allah knows all Muslims. There are some are closer, some are more dearer, some are more beloved to Allah by virtue of what they do. Yes? Look at this next page. My slave approaches me with nothing more beloved to me than that which I have made obligatory. Give five prayers, fasting Ramadan, 
zakat, hajj. Those things are obligatory. What you do is that, that first, that first stage of drawing nearer to Allah, understand, we are drawing nearer to Allah. Huh? Let's follow it. Okay. We're drawing, we are drawing nearer to Allah through initially our obligatory acts of worship. So, somebody says, we don't pray anymore, rubbish. Why? Because the hadith said, Allah, huh? what belongs to that? Things which are more to Allah are acts of worship. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never exempt from, the, from praying. How can somebody else? So we reject that. And the science of the soul rejects that. Out loud. Like what? Going back to stages, huh? and my slave keeps drawing nearer to me with voluntary works in terms of him. Let me ask you a question. The love of Allah here comes when? Look at it. When does the love of Allah come? Uh, when you keep drawing nearer and nearer to through voluntary works. Through voluntary works. Meaning that when you start doing extra works, and when I mean by extra works, things outside the obligatory. So coming to this class is an extra event. Doing your winter, doing your Sunday, fasting on the Thursdays, reading the Quran, uh, uh, getting involved in Islamic society, charity week, discovering Islam week, the activities that the Islamic society does. So I think of this, all these extra acts of worship that you guys do, and you do them sincerely, I think you're getting Allah's love. Allah's love doesn't really come until you start doing extra stuff. You get that point? Obviously Allah can love someone, you know, obviously, but in his hadith, there's stages. Yeah? Right. And then what? When Allah loves you, <clears throat> what happens? Muhammad, what happens? No, you are sure because the answer is right there. Yeah, so because I'm sincere in these two, 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 two years. Oh, I'm sorry. If he asks me, I'm sure you give him. Yeah, that's it. Step back and go back to the before. And when I love him, then. The head in which he hears, his sight in which he sees, his hand in which he sees. And his foot with which he walks or she walks. In other words, when Allah loves you, you begin to walk what Allah wants you to walk, what Allah loves you to walk towards. You touch only that which Allah loves you to touch. You see with only that which Allah loves you to see. You talk only with that which Allah loves to hear. In other words, you become a godly individual. A godly individual, and you're a man. You don't become God, you went in an Akita. God does not occupy time, space, or human body, human bodies. That's been clarified, right? That's why we did not the first. Understand things like this. But you become a godly individual. Right? A man of God. All women of God. Right? And then what happens? If you ask Allah, Allah will surely give you because He loves you. And He seeks refuge and protection. I will show you the technique. Alright? That's what a uh, soul does, and that's what a real person of the soul has. Would you not want that? Would you not want that? Had it to be a description of you, a description of you, would you not? Allah, Allah to love you. If Allah loves you, He's not going to what? He's not going to punish you. Punish you, punish you of course. That, that doesn't mean you can go and do haram because you wouldn't, because you're only doing supernatural works, let alone the obligatory. Okay. So you see what people are saying about me, you're a Sufi. They mean it in a very derogatory way, because they're ignorant. I feel embarrassed because I'm not, I'm not that. I write I say, Allah, I wish I was. Allah, I wish I was this. Because when they say, oh, you're a Sufi, I don't think of this. Yeah, from the time, yeah. I wish, I wish that's my reality. 
Yeah, I pray that Allah to make that for them. After I saw the scholars have said, for some ignorant people, for all your sufis, and they say, Ya Allah, make me one. Because in their minds, they think it's hadith. Uh, in the mind of the ignorance, who cares what they think? Yeah? Who cares? But this is what it is. Hadith. Sahih. Ibn Bukhan. Bismillah. To clarify, a Sufi is a man of the mixed learning. When I say man, I also mean woman, so yeah. Obviously, do I have to keep on clarifying that? A man of religious learning, because the hadith says, My slave approaches me, nothing more beloved to me than what I have made obligatory upon him. Understand, when I say have knowledge, you can't pray correctly if you don't know how to pray. Right? You can't give your zakah if you don't know how to give your zakah. You can't do hajj if you don't know how to do hajj. That's fiqh. You have to have knowledge. Knowledge of what? Far ayn. Right? So, the hadith suggests you can't be ignorant to get to, uh, as a person to solve. You understand that? Huh? You can't be ignorant. If you're going to claim to be a person to solve, you can't be ignorant. You have to be a person to solve. You have to be a person You have to be a person to solve. No such thing as being rich in the states or being ignorant of your father. No such thing. Like, you just learn. Only through the learning can the Sufi know which man of Allah or what has been made obligatory for him. He has applied what he knew because the hadith says he not only approaches Allah with obligatory but keeps drawing near to me with obligatory works until I love him. He has applied what he knew. And, and after Jum'ah, Muhammad, we wrote, we read from the day of the sun, and the end of the Knowledge? But is that enough? No. Action. You apply what you know. The person of Sawaf is the person who applies what he has learned. You understand? Apply what you learned. And in turn, Allah gave him knowledge of what he did not know because the hadith says, <laughs> And when I love him, I am his hearing with which he hears, his sight with which he sees, his hand with which he seizes, and his foot with which he walks. <laughs> is that not an inspired person? A person of that caliber? That person is an inspiration? To look at, an inspiration to be with, an inspiration to listen to, an inspiration to look at and gaze upon because if somebody is like that, you are looking at somebody who has, mashallah, reached the highest levels. And there are people like that. So Allah bless you and I spend more time with you. This is a principle for the consumer awareness of the technology or the beauty of Allah which, in the context of human actions, such as hearing, sight, seizing, and walking, consists of realizing the words of the Qur'an and of Allah, that it is He who created you and what you do. We could spend the next hour to on this slide, and we don't have time, we have a lot more slides, but go back and look at this in more detail, uh, inshallah. We are going to break for Salat al -Isha. we'll pause the live stream, uh, those who need to come to do wudu, please come to do wudu. Uh, Insha'Allah, we will pray. Salat al Isha. I've got Yusuf or Shaka, so I don't know which one of you wants to do the Adan. I'm going to fight out between yourself and someone do the Adan. Yusuf needs practice. Yusuf needs practice. Shaka is better, yeah? You said you want, uh, he's going to be modern for next year.
So we're looking at this, okay, this is a little live stream, let me know, and thumbs up on the live stream one. Hello, Jerry, you up and running? You in the old bar for walking around? You guys are better not always sleeping in the bar. You guys are having a big piece of the back. <laughs> Is, i.e., a person who we should call a Sufi, is somebody who is a friend of Allah. So that is worships, this is what is expected of him or her. And then there's extra acts of worship until they gain the love, love of Allah and Allah loves them. So a person of the Sawaf is a person who Allah loves. They love Allah and Allah loves them. And if they make dua, then dua is answered. In other words, you become a friend of God. Right? That's why the Prophet has said in the beginning, he, he who is hostile to a friend of mine. And the Prophet then goes to explain how you become a friend. Can you see that? The Prophet starts about if anybody, uh, a person who's hostile to a friend of God, I declare war. You don't mess around. He's a friend of God. But then the hadith goes to clarify, how do you become a friend of God? How do you end up being somebody that God loves? We well, do those things, which necessitates what? Knowledge. Which necessitates what? Action. Right? And doing extra works. And a whole bunch of other stuff which we'll explain. Okay? That's what a person of the soul is, and that's what the soul of journey is about. Okay? And if you do all of that, you, do, you will worship as Allah sees you, right? Because Allah wants to see you. Amen. Anyway. Listen to me. Go. The origin of the word Sufi thus lies in the prophetic sunnah. The sincerity to Allah that is eternal to us all among, among the earliest Muslims. This is simply a state of being without a name. Yeah, the Sahaba and the early Muslims, that's, that's their thing, that's how they were. Yeah, they didn't need to any, have a whole big subject. That was the default state of the Sahaba and the Salaf. It only became Muslim discipline when the majority of the community had drifted away and changed from the state. Muslims of subsequent generations required systematic. This is what one man mentioned. This is it right here. Because of the change in the Islamic environment after the earliest generations, the discipline by the name of the Sawa came to exist. So now we have a subject. Like Aqida came about, Fiqh came about, Usul al Fiqh came about, Tafsir came about. They came more after. We need a lot. And so, what is the definition of uh, so, what is it? Nearly 2,000 mentioned it is. All of them were reasonable to sincerity in returning to Allah. Sincerity in returning to Allah. Abib Umar, in practice. Sufism is to act with Islam and to embody the qualities in accordance with the message of Allah and His Messenger both experientially and with his realization. This is what uh, it's like, right? So you move uh, Sophia, Sophia, behind, okay, and then Sara, Sara. Uh, you always moved over. Okay. That's what we were talking about before about emanating the Prophet, huh? The soul of Sufi is to act with ihsan, excellence, to embody the qualities in accordance with the message, the messenger, which would be R. 
of Allah, and the Messenger of Allah, and his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other words, the more you act like the Prophet, inwardly and outwardly, the greater you are in your tasawwuf. And the further you are from the Prophet's way, inwardly and outwardly, the further you, you are away from so That's what we try to do. It is to climb the ladder of Islam and Iman, and to want things the rights of things to Allah, to Arifa, and complete love for Allah and for Allah. It is to have excellence in following the Messenger of Allah, and to attain the fruits of that by way of love of Allah. Does anybody not want that? Is that something we all want? Yeah? To climb the ladder of Islam through your fiqh, through your act, through your um, Knowing the ahkam, the rulings, acting an iman, to know the correct Messiah of Allah and His Messenger and the angels and, and the books until one attains the ranks of nearness to Allah. You can't become close to Allah without, without the Sharia. You can't become close to Allah without the correct aqidah. You can't. And anybody who says you can, you are wrong. It's foolish. It's a lie. Right? Somebody who claims that they're close to Allah. And they're not following the, the, the deen of Allah, the religion of Allah, is a liar, is a fraud. Okay? It's a question or a clarification? Just the mic, please. Ah, inshallah. I'll be fixed to learn it. Alright, moving on. So, good character, mashallah, I need to Good character, that's why everybody's falling asleep. Now you're going to wake up. Good character. So is essentially good manners. Whoever has more good manners than you has more soul. Simple. Its reality is good manners, akhlaq. Doing without the world of humility and patience. Modesty, modesty, fear, mercy, soft-heartedness, gentleness, a collection of ex excellent characteristics. So it's not about images and outward form. It's not about a particular image. You wear a particular type of clothing, you wear a particular type of, of, of turban in a particular colour, or you do or you wear a particular clothing item or a ring or whatever. It's not about any of that. They are sunnas that are important, but the reality is all of this. The reality is all of that. So it's not about images and outward forms. Now put that in there because <clears throat> some people who um, practice the soul, they reduce it to that. And they forget <clears throat> the reality of it is that it's a lot more than simply going up to certain gatherings, <clears throat> wearing particular items of clothing <clears throat> that are specific to this particular way. It's all about inward and outward uh, alignment with the Sharia according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay. It's all about gaining good manners, understanding reality and experiencing in which one reaches the station of Islam. What does the Quran and Hadith say about the soul? Alright, we've already mentioned one hadith, which is a very powerful hadith, but we're going to look at a bit more depth. Allah and He truly gracious to the believers in sending them a messenger from among their own, to recite His revelations to them, to purify them, and to teach them the scripture and wisdom in full that they were clearly astray. In the Quran, Allah says that on the day of judgment, on a day that neither wealth nor children will be of any benefit, except He who comes to Allah with a sound heart. Muhammad, what do you take from <coughs> the first verse? What is the take home message? Given the context of the topic we're talking about. Uh, the key word is to purify them. Purify them, yes. Purification. Purify them from their lower egos, the bad characteristics that they have, and purify them by replacing their bad qualities with good qualities. Uh, 
and the sisters. Sister on the back here on the laptop. What's your name? Uh, Sweetie. Sweetie. Listen now, what do you take from the next verse? That uh, nothing can be benefits from the tree of the person except Allah and having a very sound heart. Sound heart. Yeah. <clears throat> sound heart. Fiqh doesn't tell you how to have a sound heart. Aqidah doesn't tell you to have a sound heart. To solve what it does. It's all about having a sound heart. I don't think they do that. I will explain. And in the famous hadith, the Prophet says that verily in the body there is a piece of flesh. If it is sound, the body is all sound. If it is corrupt, the body is all corrupt. Verily it is the heart. And also, verily Allah does not look at your forms nor your bodies. However, He looks upon your heart. So the gaze of Allah, what Allah is more interested in, is not your bodily outward forms. By the way, we're going to upload this. Hi tonight, shall we be uploaded? Allah's not interested in your outward forms. Alright? Because Shaitan had a nice outward form. He was praying and doing all of these amazing things. But look where he ended up. Allah's more interest what's going on inside. What's in the heart? Question! If that's the case, <clears throat> how much time do you spend on your heart? Looking after it and cleaning it. Are you, you spend more time on your outward forms, beautifying yourselves, making yourself clean? But how about how much time do you spend in your heart? And do you even know how to clean your heart? Is a big question. Mindfulness of these commandments. The Islamic scholars have worked out the science and are analyzing the states of the heart. Of bringing it into this condition of soundness. In the fullness of time, as we discussed earlier, the science applied the name for soul in English, Sufism. A traditional label for what we might nowadays more intelligently call Islamic psychology. So, the science, this is it's a knowledge of how to purify the heart and the different states of the heart or the soul. Is a subject that the subject that deals with that is the soul. And if you want to call it by a different name, because obviously we've got some psychologists in the back, right? Islamic psychology. Islamic psychology. Those who are Arab, how would you say is psychology in Arabic? Uh, hands up, who knows? Psychology in Arabic. You know? In the next. In the next, translate that into English, knowledge of oneself. Is that not interesting? Because the soul is all about knowledge of yourself. Know yourself, you know Allah. Know your weaknesses, know that. Your defects, you can get rid of them from your heart and replace them with what's good. In the next, literally Islamic psychology. Alright, so before the Western world had Psychology, the Muslim world beat it by a thousand years longer. Islamic psychology. Very different, right? The word soul, or oh, Sufis, or this or that. Islamic psychology, that's what we're talking about here. Ilm al nafs, knowledge of yourself, knowledge of your ego, knowledge of your heart, the different states of the heart, the, 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 the disease of the heart. That's what we're talking about. You say psychology, no one has a problem. You take the soul, everyone freaks out. Everybody freaks out. Well, some people freak out. Islamic psychology in brackets to soul, and its importance. Therefore, it is of the utmost importance for any believer that he or she should be concerned with their soul and the states of their hearts. Because you just heard the verse of the Quran and the hadith telling you all about it. There's your proof from the Quran and the Sunnah. Sufism is a knowledge of states of the human soul and heart, through which one recognizes the diseases of the heart, how to replace them, and what to replace them with. So I'll put that in bold. That's the main way to focus on. The soul is the knowledge of the state of the human soul. And heart, 
Why? Because through that you recognize the diseases you have in yourself. In ourselves, you have diseases. And now we know how to replace them and to what to replace them with. Alright? Very important. How to purify the heart of learning all the traits and replace the evil that which is particularly essential. It's called traveling, Suluk. So that's called Suluk. Traveling. Where are you traveling to? To Allah. You are to solve is about a journey. Self transformation in the word you guys use, right? Yeah, use this word. Is that you guys call it? Self development. Yeah, you guys call it self development. Yes, that, 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 that is the soul. The only thing is that you don't have these guys and girls online, you know, paying this amount of money, and I'll teach you this, and I'll teach you that, and you'll go for you know, 40 days, if you do this, and you do that, and it's, you know, it'll be, that's all the soul. Yeah, they're just kind of packaging a, a new kind of woke kind of language for people to get it's the soul. The only problem I, I have with it is that the practitioners, those people, are not real uh, uh, experts in it. Right? I've seen a lot of it now, kind of people latching on to this kind of um, self-development, self-healing, and all this type of stuff. There's some benefit, but they're not. How can a person transform you if he or she themselves have not been transformed? Do you understand that? The Prophet transformed the Sahara because the Prophet was a Prophet was a Prophet. And the Sahaba transformed other people because they have become transformed by the Prophet and the hack in the soul and the soul world. But how can somebody cure you when they themselves have the same problems? They may, they may be knowledgeable about it, but they're still the same egotistical, huh? angry, shallow individual, just a bit more knowledgeable in how to talk. It's called Suluk, traveling, because you're traveling to Allah. This is the journey to Allah that aims at striving to purify your heart through knowledge and good works. Until you reach Ihsan, to worship Allah as you see Him. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Given the importance that the Quran attaches, attaches to obtaining a sound heart, we are not surprised to find that the influence of Islam psychology has been massive. In the former two first four centuries of Islam, the time when the great works of the Sea of Kabi the brother and so forth were laid down. The ulama also applied their minds to this problem of sound heart. Okay, so they, they, at the time when thick was being, 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 being developed and aqidah and grammar, obviously uh, focus on the inward also began to take place. And the scholars realized the importance of this. This was first visible when following the example of the Dawi, many of the early aesthetics, such as Sufjani. Sufyan al Dawi and Abdullah ibn Mubarak had focused their concerns explicitly on the art of purifying the heart. The methods they recommended were frequent fasting and night prayer, periodic retreats, and other acts. The science of Sufism. So now we know it's a subject, it's a science. Like fiqh, like aqidah, like tafsir, it's a, it's a science. Like psychology, it's a science, right? Psychology is science? Science. They did. They took it from the Muslims. They did. They took it from the Muslims. And the Muslims forgot about it. They called it Bidai. Uh, the irony of it. There you go. Came into being to preserve and transmit a particular aspect of the Sharia. That of ikhlas or sincerity. So, the element to solve, the knowledge to solve is committing to preserve and transmit a particular aspect of the Sharia. Which aspect in particular? Sincerity. Okay, you pray, you fast, you do all these things. What, are you going to gain the love of Allah? Not necessarily. Why? Because if you do all of that, showing off, arrogant, you're not going to gain the love of Allah, are you? Because that's what Shaytan did. Never got the love of Allah, did he? Got the wrath of Allah. So how do you become sincere? People ask me that all the time. How do I become sincere? We would recognize that the sunnah of the Prophet was not only words and actions, but also states and feelings. A Muslim must not only say certain things and do certain things, but he must also be something. What should you be? 
That is the question. Are we viewed these hearts ultimately an annual of rules which weren't meticulously followed in terms of passports and paradise? Is that not what most Muslims think? Huh? I pray, and I fast, and I do all these things, I'm going to go to heaven. Not necessarily. Why? Why is that not necessarily the case? Say it. Because you might not do it with sincerity. Yeah. You might not do it with sincerity. That's what Shaitan did. Or you may be doing other things. How many people pray and fast and all these things and they're really horrible people? Why? Why is that the case? We have people who have practiced Islam fully outwardly, and they are wretched people, right? They are horrible people. At home, they are horrible to their wife, they are horrible to their children. Uh, outside, they're liars, they cheat, you can't trust them. And they're always in the mosque, always praying. Or even worse, in this day and age, they become extremists, killing everybody. Yeah? Kill, kill. Like you have ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Boko Haram in Nigeria, and you go to other kinds of groups. They all pray and practice and all this type of stuff, right? Well, are they, do they have beautiful character? No. Where's the pity in killing these people? So what's gone wrong? Something has gone wrong. Outwardly it looks nice, inwardly it's wretched. Because there's no focus on the inward. Instead, it is a confusion of social, intellectual, and spiritual, whose purpose is to cleanse the human heart. How do we clean your hearts? That's the soul. Iman and Ihsan. The Hadith word to worship Allah shows the interrelation of these three fundamentals. The how of worship is known through the external descriptions of Islam, fiqh, sharia, and following their mazami. The validity of this worship, in turn, presupposes Iman, Aqidah, or faith in Allah and the Islamic revelation, without which worship would be front and empty in our We want to pray, and you don't believe in Allah. What's the point? Huh? You don't believe in Allah. You don't put your worship. Okay? And the outward, the how worship is only known through the external prescriptions, following the Sunnah, following the Shia, following the Mecca, and so forth. The words, as if you see them, show that Ihsan implies a human change, for it entails the experience of what, to most of us, is not experienced. Let Allah make us all experience it. I mean, say I mean. So to understand the soul, we must look at the nature of this change in relation to both Islam and Iman. At the level of Islam, we said that the soul requires Islam through submission to the rules of sacred law. But for Islam, for its part, usually requires the soul. Why? For the very good reason that the Sunnah, which Muslims have been commanded to follow, is not just the words and action of the Prophet وسلم. But also his states, states of the heart such ikhlas, sincerity, taqwa, God fearingness, tawakkul, reliance on Allah, rahmah, mercy, tawakkul, humility, and so on. So, how do we gain these things? How do we gain sincerity, God fearingness, reliance on Allah, mercy, humility? That's all the soul. And it, it teaches you how to do that. It's a lifelong condition and a lifelong struggle. But these are inward states, right? Of the Prophet and the Sahaba and the Muslims. Classification of human action. Human actions are not simply divided into two shapes of morality, right or wrong, but rather five, a ranging order of their consequences in the next world. The obligatory wajib is that whose performance is by Allah in the next life, and whose non performance is punished. If I pray, I'm rewarded by Allah if I'm sincere. If I don't pray, potentially I may get punished. That's obligatory. The recommended rule is that whose performance is rewarded, but whose non performance is not punished. The permissible mubah is indifference unconnected with either reward or punishment. The offensive makrur is that whose non performance is rewarded, but whose performance is not punished. The immovable haram is that whose non performance is rewarded and whose performance is punished. If one dies, on repents. Oh, well, that's clear. The Quran and Sunnah make plain to us that 
human space of the heart under each of these areas. But the human heart, your heart, my heart, and the heart of everybody else comes underneath these same headings. Yet they are not dealt with in books in the Vita or Fiqh, the Islamic jurisprudence. Unlike the prayer, Sadaa, or fasting, they are not quantifiable in terms of the specific amount of them that must be done. Do you understand that? How much ikhlas should you have in your heart? Four rak'at, the masal, fifth masal, the month of Ramadan, you can't quantify it. For though they are not countable, they are of the utmost importance to every Muslim. Let's look at a few examples. So just bear with me, inshallah, we're going to look at some interesting examples that will highlight what's being said. Say to the heart, Allah of Allah, in Surah al Nahara of the Quran, Allah blames those who describes associates to Allah in their work as much as they love Allah. Then he says, and those who believe are greater in love for Allah. Making being a believer, being a believer conditional upon having greater love for Allah than any other. Number two, mercy. The Prophet said, Whosoever is not merciful to people, Allah will show no mercy. Have mercy to those on the earth, and he who is in heavens, Tafwid or Ta'wil, will have mercy on you. Now that it's important now. Then for me, he relates the world of authenticated as in the heading. Mercy is not taken out to anyone except the down. Number three, love of each other. The Prophet said, by him in his hand is my soul. None of you shall enter paradise until you believe, and none of you shall believe until you love one another. Number four, presence of mind in the prayer of Salah. Abu Dawood relates in his term that Abari and Tasir had that the Prophet said, Truly a man leaves, and none of his prayer has been recorded for him except a tenth of it. A man commits. Eighth of it, seventh of it, sixth of it, fifth of it, fourth of it, third of it, half of it. Meaning that none of a person's prayer counts for him except that in which he is present in his heart of the law. Uh, you and I have just prayed Risha in Jama'ah, inshallah, the reward for that. But presence of heart, how much of your heart is present? Half, quarter, one eighth, none at all? Was your mind on the World Cup? On food, or what you're going to do after this, on your degree, your master's, your PhD, or what was your mind on so well? Number five, love for the Prophet. Bukhari relates to this in his Sahih that the Prophet said, None of you believes until I am more beloved to him than his father, his son, and all people. When people say, You love the Prophet too much, Yani, I don't really understand how that makes any sense. You love the Prophet too much. What, if I love the Prophet more than my father, more than my children, more than my degree, my master's, PhD, my car, my house, my clothes, and all the happy, I'm more beloved than your own self. You love the Prophet more than you love yourself. All words, right? But what's the reality? How do we gain them? How do you move on from just those words to actually start feeling it and believing it and being an example of it that people can see? It is plain from these texts that none of the states mentioned, whether mercy, love, or presence of the heart, are quantifiable. For the Sharia cannot specify that one must do two units of mercy or have three units of presence of mind in the way that the number of rakahs of prayer is specified. Yet each of them is personally a the truth of the Muslim. Let us complete the picture by looking at a few examples of states that are haram or strictly unlawful. We're going to flip it around to the opposite of haram. Examples of states that are haram or strictly unlawful. Number one, fear of anyone besides Allah. Allah Most High says in Surah Allah, Allah, the Quran, and fulfill my covenant, I will fulfill your covenant, and fear me alone. But how many of us fear for the people? How many of you fear 
your lecturer, your teacher, your friends, how many people fear the love God? Everyone fears. If you're going to take that literally, you know, it's haram to fear anybody with your own love. The last phrase of which, according to Imam Bakr al Ibn al Arazi, establishes that a human being is obliged to fear no one besides Allah Most High. Allah Most High says, No displays of Allah's mercy except the people who disbelieve, indicating the unlawfulness of the sinful state by coupling it with the worst human condition possible, that of unbelief. How many students do I see? Right? How many people do you come across who they, they're always in despair? Okay. You see them, right? People are always in despair. Maybe you have come through that. But a phase in your life, you start to despair of Allah's mercy. And I always, I teach it in the khutbah, you shouldn't be like that. The khutbah is all us, for those of you who remember, I teach it on this topic. Right? We shouldn't say, oh, the khulas, the khulas, the khulas, the khulas, the You remind me, what did I say in the khutbah on this topic? The last khutbah was all that talked about. We shouldn't expect, we should normally be saying, How many people did I say on this topic? We should not have any a belief should not be saying, why me? Why is that? Because huh? there's a hidden meaning behind it. Yeah, there's a hidden meaning behind it. But the point is the part, the part before that, people despair. Why has this happened to me? What did I do to deserve it? Remember the Arrogance came up. The prophet said, I'm giving No one shall enter paradise who has a particle of arrogance. In his heart. What's arrogance? To believe yourself better than somebody else. All you medics, all you dentists who see themselves better than other people, unbeknown to yourselves. Haram. 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 For students on certain courses to look down on other students. Haram. And I say it again, haram to do that. Okay, and I keep on saying it because it's very common. And people outside of those courses see the arrogance. People take heed huh, of what I've just said. Number four, envy. Meaning to wish for another to lose the lessons he enjoys. Abu Dawood, the race of Prophet said, Beware of envy, for envy consumes good works, as flames consume firewood. I'm jealous because he's done this, or he has that. I'm jealous of that sister because she's done this, I don't have that. Haram. Haram. How many of us have these things? How many? Right. And mashallah, you may be half the Quran, mashallah, you may be doing all these things, but you have all these diseases in your heart. Number five, showing off act, showing off in acts of worship. A hadith relates to hadith, a hadith relates to a sahih thing of transmission. But the Prophet says in the slightest thing that shows off the good works is as if worshipping others with Allah. See this thing that people buy on a lot of shit, 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 shit. If people just moved away from what they think is shit and get down to what shit really is, you'll find that most of us are mushrikeen in this context. Uh, we, we show up in our act of worship. We are, most of us do that. In ways unbeknown to ourselves. Uh, and, and this is the problem, we don't know it. It's, and you could be worshiping Allah all these years, you show it off. Not look at other people, look at yourself. Uh, an Imam, give an example. An Imam al Ghazali says in his Ahya al Madin, he gives an example of this. Are right, you ready for this? He says an example of this showing off would be like there's a girl that you want to get married to. All right, I've got your attention now. Everyone's woke up, right? Everyone's woke up. Good. Uh, there's a girl who wants to marry. All right? And her father worships in a particular masjid. Her father works at, worships in a particular masjid. We always go to that particular masjid. So you, because you want to impress him, start to attend that particular masjid. So he sees you. So when you come to you know, approach for her hand, he knows you. He's all oh, mashallah, this guy's always in the mosque. The question, are you going to the mosque 
for Allah or you didn't get for him. Reality didn't get for him. And Imam al-Ghazali has that as one of the hidden acts of showing off. You apply that to your life, you'll see you can you do that many, many ways. Many things you do that. I mean, I feel myself when I have to say this. These are the hidden things. These things are very obvious, and things are very hidden. And imagine your whole life, you worship Allah, but then, as if you worship according to Allah. Give me another example to wake you up, if that didn't wake you up. There was a famous, a famous story of, of, a, of a man who went into a mosque to pray, and the mosque was empty, there was nobody there. And he prays into the heart. He hears the door of the mosque open, and footsteps. So he's been, now he was an, initially got to pray two rak'at very quickly, and he's going to be out the door. But now he feels a bit ashamed. He's going to be, let me take my time on there because I was going to boom, 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 and get out. Now he feels, feels a bit embarrassed. He's going to pray properly. And you pray your one prayer, and you, mashallah, the ruku and the sujood, mashallah. And he says, salam alaykum, mashallah, we pray. Before hearing whoever came in, he was like he was out the door. He was out the door. Now he has to. He's afraid what this person may think of him. So he finishes, mashallah, he gets up, has his head down, mashallah, he walks out. But he wants to see who that person was that he was trying to impress unbeknown to himself. And he looks up, and guess what he sees? A goat. <laughs> A goat came into the mosque. And he said, La ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah. I just did that prayer for a goat. I did that prayer for a goat. And he made tawbah and turned back. That's, that's a sign that Allah is good for a person. How many of us do stuff of that nature? Many of I never realized. I'm trying to impress. Our classes, through our knowledge, trying to impress people with what we know. Deep in there. Goat or no goat, if you replace a goat with a person, it's still the same problem. The goat is quite severe. But the reality that a goat or a person or whoever else is irrelevant because the point is you're doing it for an Allah. Right? This is it. These and similar Haram tables states are not found in books or text, traditional books. The Tasbih can only be brought on five of scriptural sources. Rather, they are examined in their causes and were brought directly by the scholars of the inner depth of the soul, men such as Imam al Ghazali in his Ikhtar al Imam al Rabani in his Mashidat, Asim Shawan in his Awal Ahumma al Ma'arif, Al Qadi al Nafti in his. Existence of the hearts and similar classic works which discuss and solve hundreds of ethical questions about the human heart. These are books of Sharia and their questions are questions which are people of how it is lawful or unlawful for a Muslim to be and will preserve be part of protected sunnah during these studies. Nobody ever asked me this question how should I be? I get asked about Islamic violence. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, mortgages and this and that, but nobody ever comes and says, how do I be a Muslim? How do I, I need to turn on their hearts? Very rare. Nobody focuses on it. Because the age we live in is an age that has been, uh, this reality, this subject has been, uh, so much mis misinformation on this subject has made people now be scared of even the same word for soul. Uh, or Sufism or oh. And the problem that's happened is that you have the mental health issues become reality. I'm rather, I say mental health in Arabic, I'm rather nefs, disease of the, of the self. Same thing, what, what, why are you talking about disease of the heart, disease of the nefs? Wait. Who leads with information? All Muslims. The Quranic verses and authenticated hadiths all point to the fact that Say certain things, but also must be something, must attain certain states of the heart and eliminate others. Do we ever fear someone besides Allah? Do 
we have a particle of average in our hearts? Or that, ex that ex engineers, that the list goes down, or even universities, even universities, even certain passport holders, even certain countries, I can go on and on and on and on. Or Haram. Do we see ourselves as better than others? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Do we see ourselves as better than others? Even seeing yourself better than another Muslim. Because how do you know that particular person can go to hell? Any guarantee? Any guarantee? How do you know you are going to heaven? Any guarantee? And you know, Al Ghazali talks about this in the, the beginning, the guidance, towards the end, talking about this issue. And you study this in the microbiome in year one. I would love for the Prophet to Allah to raise it in our work about any better thing to do. What do you think? If, that was, if you looked at the Prophet more than you looked at yourself, you wouldn't miss better, would you? You wouldn't be missing better. Do we really have trust in our world? Is there the slightest place of showing off in our good works? Do we get jealous of others? Do we backbite? Get angry? Is there anybody sat here right now who thinks none of this applies to you? Put your hand up. Just none of this applies to you. Do we feel that we are so close to Allah that He leaves us? Do we worship Allah as if we see Him? The nafs, this is what Rahim mentioned before. The nafs, part of this reflection will show the Muslim where he stands on this aspect of his deen. In classical times, godly Muslims should obtain the stays from not meant to amateurs, but rather dedicated to the ulama of the heart. This was, written, this was written many years ago, but see, these amateurs now, they've increased. Uh, it's it's a term, it's been kind of middle age. Uh, lifestyle coach, is that it? Have I got the right term? You guys keep on sharing these terms, man. Right? Someone like me can't keep up anymore. Was it? Coaches? Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about. What do you call them? Huh? Lifestyle coach. That's what they call them. I'm going to help you change your lifestyle. Make okay? you a better person. Like these coaches. The person himself probably needs it more than me. That's funny, huh? I was going to say that there's so many of these. I'm shocked. I am shocked. And they are charging money like my God. Thousands. Thousands. Yeah. And what I'm seeing now is Muslims capitalizing on that. Yeah. yeah. Forget all the peers. I'm not talking about that. I don't know what kind of stuff you got now, Instagram and this type of stuff right now. This is it. Oh, and I'm, I'm, I, one particular one I had a look at, and I said, okay, let me check this out. Let me see what this guy is all about. And he's claiming I know Ghazali, and I've studied Ghazali's works. I'm looking at him, and I'm thinking, I mean, you don't look like somebody who's been purified. And you may find this difficult, and forgive me for being very, very blunt, but. You know when you, when you spend time with people who have done this transformation? Right? You see it. And you feel it. And I've been blessed, not for my own doing anything good, but God has shown me mercy. And I've sat with people who this kind of transformation, you can see it. And you feel it. They don't have to say anything. Just sitting with them, you are gaining a lot more than you probably somebody else. But these type of individuals, I don't look at them, I'm, I'm not seeing any a purified individual. I'm not. I people get argue and say, what do you know? I kind of do know a little bit because of some people. They are all purified, in my opinion. I know hundreds of thousands of people's opinion. I just don't see that. And this guy's charging life, lifelong subscription. 
You pay this amount of money and you've got me for the rest of my life? This is central now to the idea of soul, your deaths. You are the problem. I am the problem. My ego, your ego, that's the biggest barrier to you becoming closer to Allah. The biggest barrier to spirituality is your ego. Master your ego, and you'll start to feel something in your salah, in your zakah, in your fast, in your hajj. When you read the Quran, you'll feel something. You'll taste your ego, your deaths. Is what's causing the problem. Allah testifies in Surah Yusuf, only the desire ever commands to do evil. In our childhood, our parents taught us how to behave with praise or blame, and the wantonness which permeated and colored our whole motivation for doing evil. But when childhood ends and we come of age of Islam, the religion makes it clear to us, both by the book Hadith and by the words of the Prophet the slightest bit of sugar offering good works is as if worshipping others of Allah. Therefore, being illustrated by what is state is no longer good enough, and that we must change our motives entirely, and henceforth be motivated by nothing but desire for Allah Himself. The Islamic revelation thus tells the Muslim that it is really true to break these habits of thinking and motivation, but it does not tell him how. See online, you go online, you post something, you want that. You want that person like set amount of likes, right? You want a set amount of followers, come on, yeah. Instagram, you want, you want the likes, you want the followers, you want the praise. Oh you on Instagram or Facebook or whatever you guys are using. Why is Allah's praise on the why are you always seeking validation from other people? When other people can't do anything for you, can they reward you? Can they finish you? They give you anything when you're seeking that which they don't give and they can't give, and you think Allah can give you. For that, we must go to the scholars of the states. In accordance with the Quran of the Person, ask those who know if you know not. Change through purification. There is no doubt that living without this change purifies the Muslims by bringing. Was one of the central duties of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for Allah says in the Surah Al Hijrah in the Quran, Allah has truly blessed the believers, for He has sent them a messenger of themselves, who recites His signs to them and purifies them, and teaches them the book and the wisdom. See the purifying in them? Yeah, that's our basis for spirituality, for the soul. To purify you, to make you into a better person, to make you from a person that's very angry. A person that is very merciful, to make you into a person that's, that was very arrogant to being very humble. It is this to list four tasks of the prophetic mission, the sending of which means precisely to purify them and has no other lexical sense. So, the, the first of all, I mentioned him means to purify them has no other linguistical sense. Now it is plain that this teaching function cannot, as part of an eternal revelation, have ended with the passing of the first generation. A fact that Allah explicitly confirms in his best book in Quran, Surah Al-Mu'man, and follow the path of him who turns into you. These verses indicate the teaching and transformative role of those who convey the Islamic revelation to Muslims. The choice of word ittaba, follow in the verse, implies both keeping the company of and following of a teacher. You want to become purified. Yes, you have to have a teacher. You can't become a book, how to be happy, or whatever that book, you know, these books have nowadays, or how to be a successful Muslim. Without reading a book doesn't do it. Right? You have to have attachments 
to somebody who has already walked this walk and reached Allah. This is why in the history of the in the history of the soul, we find out through that though there were many methods and schools of thought, tariqas, as Salih said, these two things never changed. Keeping the company of a teacher, of a sheikh, of a rabbi, and following his example. How did the Sahaba become transformed? The Prophet. How did we continue the transformation, transformation ourselves by attaching ourselves to those who purified who pro who themselves, copying them, following them, looking at their examples? Right? I'm not that example. And there's nobody in the city that is. There's nobody in the city. I'm not anybody who says they are. They're not. There's no sheikh of this caliber in the city. But we follow Shayat, we do. All right? Exactly the same way that the Sahaba was, they did have purified by keeping the company of the Prophet وسلم, and following his example. The Sahaba so aims to replicate this and purify people leading to a transformation similar to the Sahaba. So you have to find somebody who has been purified. A Shaykh who has walked his path and has transformed his self, his ego is under control and has transformed himself. That he, that the hadith you mentioned before, until Allah looks him, you see this man, and you look at this man, and you say, SubhanAllah, this is a man that Allah loves. Right? It's not about thousands of followers, it's not about the way he looks, and all that, it's about his state. And I think that some of you, this may be very strange to hear this. And that's why people are criticized, because they haven't come across it. They think it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, it's Allah's deen. Ah, there's always going to be people on the face of the earth who are, who are guides to Allah. You just have to lower yourself, know what to look for, and you'll find them. But if you are criticizing, and your heart full of diseases, and you're labeling people mushrik and muqtada, yeah, Allah is not going to show you his friends. You're not worthy. Forgive me for saying that, you're not worthy. Allah is not going to show you. And this is why the discipline of the soul work has been preserved and transmitted by the Khalifas or groups of students under the Supreme Master. First, because this is the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu in his purified function described by the Quran. Secondly, Islamic knowledge has never been transmitted by writings alone. Or internet, or Instagram, or social media, or whatever else you guys use. But rather from other nice students. Thirdly, the nature of knowledge in question is of high, the state of being. Not just knowing and hence requires it to be taken from the succession of living masters back to the Prophet For the sheer range and number of mistakes that number of mistakes of heart required by the revelation effectively made imitation of the personal example of a teacher the only effective means of transmission. Can you see that point? Huh? Demeanor, can you see that point? You get it. How else are you gonna do this? If you don't attach yourself to a teacher, no? you can, you can, you can if you want to, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to. But if you're asking me how this is done, historically, this is the only way it's been done. And you attach yourself to somebody that has, has been successful in doing this. So far, we have spoken about the solo in respect to Islam, Sadr, and marriage. We'll try and look at it a little bit more. We'll finish soon. So far, we have spoken about the soul with respect to Islam and the Sharia of science necessary to fully realize the state of the soul in one's life. The ten states of the heart demanded by the Quran and Hadith. This contradiction between Sharia and the soul is expressed by the statement of Imam Malik. Listen to this, Imam Malik, the founder of the Malik school, from the Salaf, the Imam of Medina in his time. Listen to what he says about the soul. He who practices the soul. Without learning sacred law, corrupts his face, uh, his faith, uh, corrupts his faith, his faith becomes corrupted. You do to some of, we have no sharia. We end up missing Jum'ah. And while he who learns sacred law, fiqh, and everything else, and aqeedah, but does not practice to the soul, sincerity, extra acts of worship, Merciful, humble, 
Because learning knowledge, Islamic knowledge, makes you arrogant. And I've seen it. Many students come, including myself, and have feel how arrogant Allah protects and preserves. And then we will, inshallah, but we have that. We have that. But you have sacred law and you don't have spirituality, which we did. You may end up corrupting. Yeah? You corrupt other people through your understanding of your faith. There's no spirituality. It's all sincere. It's all anger. It's all this and that. And people see it. And people leave the deen because of it. Only he or she who can combine the two together sharia and spirituality. This is why Tasawwuf was taught as part of the traditional curriculum in madrasas across the Muslim world from Malaysia to Morocco. And this is why many of the greatest Sharia scholars of this ummah have been people of Tasawwuf, Sufis. And why until the end of the Islamic Caliphate, Muhammad, at the beginning of this century, or last century, and the subsequent Western control and cultural <laughs> dominance of Muslim lands, there were teachers of Tasawwuf, Islamic Institutions of high learning from Lucknow, India, to Istanbul, Turkey, to Cairo. Okay, that is fact. Prove to me that was the case. Now, from now until Yom Al-Qiyam, to prove to me that was not the case. All right. Uh, play. We'll stop there because it's late. Any questions? Any questions? Start with sisters, ladies first. Any questions? What's it? Why not? Why is it another dua? And then if you want to leave, they can leave. You can leave the dua. The dua is not here. Alhamdulillah. Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah 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 Somebody sees you pray, somebody sees you read the Quran. There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is that if you like them to know you are fasting, if you like them to know you are praying, if you're seeking attention from them, keep it in your heart. I want them to know. Why do you want them to know? Why do you want them to know you fasted the day? Give an example. Remember, you know, Sha'ran, a famous scholar from the past few years. He went to visit. Uh, uh, family and the man, the host, invited him in and he sat down. And the man said to his wife, uh, Bring um, the, the sufra, the thing that you sit on, not from the hajj which you've been to, not from the hajj before that, not from the hajj but that, but the hajj before that one, that one, the hajj, the seventh hajj, for example. And he said, he was a perfect soul. He said, SubhanAllah, you just ruined all your hadiths. You just ruined all your hadiths. You're trying to impress me. Unbeknown to yourself. And you may think, what's wrong with that? That's your nafs. Because you're you have you haven't understood the subtleties of the nafs. The ego wants validation from other people. The ego wants people to know. And that's part of the problem. You don't have that look for. Some of my teachers, subhanAllah, when they do dhikr, right, in gatherings, they, they have their beads in their pocket. And you can only know, the only way you know if your hands are unique and your hands are unique. If you do dhikr in the beads, one of my teachers, he had his, uh, his record of the taqib, mufti, uh, mashallah. When he do dhikr, with his beads in his pocket. 
Now, it's all out of hope here that any kind of beer, any kind of shot of there, she's hiding. Contrast that with the social media world you guys live in. Yeah? Pictures of you, selfies over here, and a selfie over there, and you want people to know you went to Hajj, you want people to know you did this, and you want people to. What? You don't believe in Allah? Yeah? Does Allah not exist? Is Allah's knowledge not sufficient for you? Why do you want people to know what's going on? I did this, and I've done that. I don't care. I don't care if you've done or haven't done it. But why are you trying to. For me, it's sickly. I have to un I unfollow people. I can't. I can't seriously. Really? I have to tell me all this. Do I, I don't need to know. But more importantly, why do you want people to know? Yeah. Why is Allah's knowledge not enough for you? Why are you seeking from people? And they're so blind. Uh, it's a question on the phone. I saw from the last year. Uh, no, no, this is directly to what, you, like, to what you just said. Well, yeah, I don't know. Does that answer your question? Right. Right. Um, I was going to say, like, should we be happy for the people? Like, is that not a part of the... Uh, Which people? The people, like, you know, showing it. Like, even though they're showing it and, like, they want the approval, should we still be just happy for them? Like, I'm not condoning the action of them showing it, but they need to strive for that. Is that not something we should do? Like, to be just be happy for them and then class leave it. I should be happy for them, they're seeking validation from the people. No one's going to make you happy for the stuff that they're doing, not the fact that they're seeking validation. They're two different things. If I say, um, it's difficult, this. all these examples of one more. Um, uh, today, I prayed 20 raka'at for uh, uh, Qiyam al -Nail, and I read six chapters of Quran. I fasted as well, and I did I, whatever else I did. I did I did this. Why am I telling you that? Why am I telling you? I, I have to ask myself, what is the motivation for me to tell you? We all talk superficial, but deep. Think, why? Why am I telling you? What's the motivation? Why, what am I, what's pushing me to tell you these things? Ultimately, I'm looking for something. But my question, what are you going to give me? You've got nothing to give me. You can't give me anything. So why am I looking for you to give me something if you've got nothing to give? Only Allah gives. But more importantly, does Allah know what I'm doing? So why do I need to tell people? Now, the question is this. If by you telling people you are a role model for them, that's okay. But! Still very careful. Because hidden, hidden in the see the, the nefs, the nefs, the ego, you can never trust it. When you study this stuff in depth, you start to really you start to uncover things about yourself you didn't know. And the nefs is so deceiving, it will shock you. And if you've never done the work, if you haven't sat with yourself and questioned the motivation, why are you doing this? Right? You will never understand how deceitful your ego is in yourself. Play it, right? Come on, Taylor. So, someone explicitly asked you when you do such and such to you, go in your heart. How do you avoid that? Why would somebody ask you? Well, you have to ask me first. When it happens. Uh, who's first? Oh, I get it. You have to perform something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Let Because I just asked the question. No, no. You had a part two of the question. No, no. It wasn't a part two. This was something else. The, the first question. Then, you've got to start. I kind of need to move back ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, the things that you said that the, the people need to um, sort of like decide themselves they need to control their mess and like the why, like, you know, knowing that all our people are doing stuff like that. Um, would you say like that's something that they have to maintain constantly, or is it something like obviously people sometimes they might like fall their mess? This is the whole point of soul. It teaches you how to get around that. It teaches you to avoid that. It's a lifelong thing. That's why I say you can't pick a book up. You want to attach yourself to a shaykh, 
I'm not sure as a, as a methodology of how to remove that. These shapes are like doctors. You know a doctor, go to, when you're sick, you go to a doctor, the doctor tells you what to do, it, it gives you medicine. The shaykh of the soul, the murabbi, the real shaykh, is able to help you overcome these things. It's a lifelong thing. So we're using your analogy like a doctor. A doctor can also teach you like avoid going to see because sometimes my sleep ails. That's what I'm trying to say. Like people who are guiding you into the dark. The people who are the people who are like the shaykhs and the people who are the shaykh of the soul. Yeah, soul. And the you know the the master that is it then like Imperative that they just don't use it, or is it like something where they, they, you know, they do fall to their necks again? The out. real shaykh here was a master himself. They never, they never, they came to point out what does mastery mean? Master, you know, there's no going back. These people, they're like Allah, they're like, they worship Allah, so they see that's where they're at. These people are going, there's no way back. They were, if anything, they increase, I increase, I increase, I increase in proximity. Uh, I just mean in the sense like is it like obviously humans in nature are not perfect so you, like from what I take from what you're saying is that like those people they don't like they don't commit sins is that like no no no, no. Okay. 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 So, sins in aqeedah is why aqeedah is important aqeedah right? when you study aqeedah isma infallibility okay is only for prophets Isma, infallibility, alright? Not sinning, okay? Because the Sunni Aqeedah, major sins, command the sins, but the, the, the prophets do not do them at all. Right? Everybody else, it's a possibility. Just because it's a possibility, then they fall into it. Is it a possibility that you will drink alcohol tonight? In, in terms of realms of possibility? Huh? Impossible. Is it likely? Not really. I hope not anyway. <laughs> I hope not. That's what we're talking about, alright? They are not infallible. No one's saying that. This is the Sunni Aqeedah. No one's infallible. But the likelihood of them falling into haram huh, is as likely as you leaving Islam, inshallah. Mm. Say. So, um, you mentioned. So you mentioned in the slides books of uh, the soul of by great scholars such as Imam Ghazali. Uh, but you've also said you can't learn the soul from a book. So uh, you can only do it by following a shift. So if, if to really attain Sufism or something like that, what is the benefit of reading books then? Oh, uh, the, the benefit is reading those books with the shaykh. And the shaykh is able to help you to do that. In absence of a shaykh, those books are the best thing you have right now. Amir. You sort of learn the script so that you can. Yeah? Is it, you sort of learn the script so that you can if you go to the meeting? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, just because you don't free anything doesn't mean you stop doing it. You see, it doesn't mean that. It, there's something a lot of accept it. What I'm trying to say is that. There's a difference between you worshiping like autopilot, like a robot, you know, like a chore, routine, routine, and doing it when you're seeing Allah, and you're tasting something in your prayer. Big difference. Yeah, big difference. Oh. Uh, do you think you can learn to solve even if you were seeking on the No. No. Do you know why? It's a good, by the way, it's a good question. Say that question again so people can hear. Uh, do you think you can learn the soul if you just seek it the Jihad? Can you learn the soul just by doing the obligatory acts? I pray, I fast, I do my zakah, I fast from there, and that's it. Can I gain that level? Why? I'm doing what I'm. But what did the hadith say in the beginning? Huh? What did the hadith say in the beginning? Huh? Yeah, when you do the, uh, you draw, you draw nothing more beloved to God than by doing the obligatory acts, Salah huh? Azza. And then what? Then you do the what? The voluntary acts, the Sunnah acts. And when you do the voluntary acts, the love of Allah kicks in. The love of Allah does not necessarily kick in, but prior, 
when you don't obey your eyes. And if that happens, if you have love of Allah, then what? You sight, with the sight of Allah, the hand tips you, you become godly. Or hand, you become godly. So you feel, no, you can't. And the big problem is your nafs, your ego. Yeah? How do you smash that ego? Shaitan, the, the, the most simplest answer to that, Shaitan prayed and done all these things better than anybody else, arguably. Allah tells him to bow down to Adam. Just one thing, just bow to Adam. What did he say? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Because the shaitan, the devil, he worshipped Allah all the time. Mashallah, constantly, he's worshipping Allah. And now, shaitan, in his mind, I'm going to bow down to Adam, and Adam has just been created right now. Why? Why am I doing that? What's he done? What he done to deserve me bowing down? Because he forgot sincerity, which is what we're talking about. The soul, sincerity. Does it matter Allah told you to bow down or not? Allah told you to bow down. All those acts of worship you did were insincere, arguably. Because if it was sincere, the same God you prayed to before, you worshipped before, is now telling you to worship him through submitting to his act of bowing down. But no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. The reality is, Shaitan was worshipping himself. His ego. He can't. If anybody could not, it would have been Shaitan. And he couldn't. He just released the question as well. Um, do you think that it's you can be great and determined that you want to sit in that level? Yeah, you can. What you, what, if you want the highest levels of Jannah, this is kind of this is how you do it. With the highest levels of Jannah, arguably, this is how you do it. I'm not saying some people are very binary and guaranteed. So you're saying, if you don't become a Sufi, you can't go to the highest level of Jannah. La, yeah. I'm going to say something in Arabic. In, in, in Yemen dialect, for those who know. I'm not going to say it. Huh? Yeah, those who know, those who know, they know it. Huh? But, no, I'm not saying that. If you want to be stupid and interpret what I'm saying that way, you can be stupid and do that yourself. But I'm not saying that. Okay? What I'm saying is that the way this woman has, has, has put the path that the scars have laid out, to achieve this is this way. It is not the only way. Allah can invite put into effort the Jannah. So I can convert to Islam, but Allah put into the highest level of Jannah. When they die. Even if they could die there and then, straight into Jannah. The highest level of Jannah. Because they've never done anything wrong. Have they done any of this self the uh, what do you call it self work? What is it called? Isn't how you call it like this? Huh? Self-development, yeah, all these kind of words, self. Tatwil and nefs in Arabic. It's not always a good thing in Arabic, it's always bad. Anyway, wait, have a verse. Or so, Arabic, which one do you like going with? Not that. So, what do you say to people who believe that uh, the only experience they've had with Sufism is like a mystic, esoteric, kind of like um, mystic kind of thing, right? Like, what does that mean? Meaning, like, some people have this idea of Sufism that it's um, only for a few people and you know, it's not accessible to everyone and it's people are arrogant and all these kind of things. So it's what exactly mean? the whole opposite of what the soul is. I tell them to come to this class, listen to my lecture, listen to what I've said. Can I ask another one? Yeah, okay, I'll come to you in a second. Anyway. So I think um, this is the first question I've got. Like, like, let's say you're on social media and you see someone that's doing an act of worship or something, right? And they showcase it for everyone to see. What should your response be? Your responsibility, right, is to focus on yourself. Forget other people. One of, one of the issues that people have when they need to solve properly, they become highly judgmental of everybody else. Right? My point is that some people think it's very obvious, which is kind of like, you know, showing anything up. Focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. Okay? Forget everybody else. If you are busy with everybody else, you're going to forget yourself. Forget yourself. It's always very easy. The example I've said before is like this. I just see sort of so much of it. Okay, but either way, you and I focus on ourselves. So if that becomes a distraction from my own shortcomings, that's stupid. I'm not busy. Allah's not going to ask about him or her. 
I'm also going to ask you about me and my shortcomings and what I'm doing and my shortcomings. So you can see that I'm putting this that the response you have is that you're lying to this person because you tell them you're not talking to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ahmed, uh, Zen, forgive me. Sit there, sit at the back. Okay. I'm in despair. I don't I can't see a way out. You have Allah. You have the Messenger. You have the Quran. But also you're forgetting the mercy of Allah. And that's what the, the book is saying. The, the, the verse of Quran explains it. Yeah? Do not despair of Allah's mercy. Doesn't matter what's happened to you, or what's been done to you, or what you've done, or how bad you, you've gone, or how far you've gone. Always come back. Allah's door is always open. Even if you need a spell, the door is always there. Yeah. You, there's no such thing, listen carefully, yeah? there's no such thing as I've got, I'm going to hell. It doesn't matter anymore. I've heard people say that. Yeah? It doesn't matter anymore. I'm going to hell. Who said you're going to hell? And why, are you, why is your sin greater than Allah's mercy? Why is your sin so great that Allah can't forgive you? That. What do you do? There's nothing you can do that Allah will forgive if you're sincere. Does that answer your question? That's where you have to come to the subject of the soul. The subject of the soul teaches you how to do that. The books of Imam Ghazali, a book called Beginning of Guidance, but ultimately uh, attach yourself. A sheikh who can teach you how to, to be sincere. How do I know if I'm doing that? Ah, how do you know? Always question yourself. Why? Why? This is called the muhasab of the nafs. We'll talk about it maybe next week. The people of, of spirituality, of the soul, they always, they never think good of the, of the ego. There's always a motive. There was a motive. There was an ulterior motive. I'm coming to this class, what for? I'm coming because I want to see my friends. I'm coming because I want to check out the brother or check out the sister. Let's be honest, so this sometimes happens, all right? Which in itself, maybe we're not happy, we're not bad, but where's the sincerity? Where's Allah? Where's Allah in all of that? Is that okay? By doing it for Allah, by this your course, whatever it is, you're, you're studying it to, 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 do, to, to do something good for this Ummah, to do something good uh, for the world. You want to, your course is a means for you to please Allah. Your course is a means for you to please Allah. Not to make money. Not to have a letter in front of your name. So people look good, so people look at you and you become I mean, you know, good to get married to. Nobody cares about that. It's all about, can you, is your course pleasing to Allah? Every single course, it doesn't matter what that course is, if you have the right intention, it can be pleasing to Allah. Barash, inshallah. Wait, uh, Zen. Uh, I have a question, Lord. You have no question? Two questions, Lord. I Two questions. I think the first one, you should be asked after this. I'm so proud of you, Lord. Okay. So I will take the second one. Uh, I, have, I want to make a presentation about the ego and I will start from there. How can I do that? I am confident that I can do it. And now I am just getting everywhere, but it, it's all over again. Right. That's where that's where the soul teaches you. That's where the subject the all how the know the difference between uh, being confident and being egotistical. Because every single confident 
every single uh, egotistical, arrogant person is always confident. But you can be confident and be humble. I'm confident. I'm humble. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to see myself better than you. You see, it. no. But I'm confident in my Islam. But it's hak. It's truth. But I'm not arrogant enough to think that people who aren't Muslim are going to go to hell straight away. Why did they become Muslim? Who am I to look down? It, the subject teaches us how to differentiate. I can't give you the answer. Because that's why the subject is so important to, to, to differentiate. And the scholars of this path, and there's few far between, in this day and age, few and far, they're able to explain it to you in a better way, inshallah. Uh, you want the second question? The second question you can ask. We're past the controversies, you know. These are all muhibbin now. These are all muhibbin now. Just on the whole thing, like, the second like, we're doing about like, parties and facilities, and I remember, like, the part of the party was like, why are you going to go over and stop everything? But I don't think what Islam is part of it then, because Islam is a beautiful love life. If you just start with the Taurus, everything, maybe that's behind you. Maybe there's no way to know the Shukri, maybe there's no progress in anything. So how would you be, I said, it's about to come out here. How would you be with Allah and be with people? Exactly. And the soul teaches you to do that. How to be with, how to be with, you know this thing of worshiping Allah as if you see him. Is that in the context, is that prayer only? Is that what you think? Just prayer and zakat and hajj? La, what about 24 hours, mate? 24 hours, 24 seven. That's what we're talking about. If you think it's just that state is restricted just to prayer and zakat and hajj, and Allah, no, 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 no. It's 24 hours. When you're with people, even, even with, with your wife. Ah, even when you're with, with your wife. And the statements of scholars that have spoken about this, that even when a man is intimate with his wife at the peak of intimacy, Allah, he's still with Allah. Can you imagine that? No, no, no. Anyway, uh, anything, anything else? Is that it? Um. A questioner from the live stream asked the question um, What do the four mudahib say specifically about the Sawaf? Ah, excellent question. I think next week we're going to answer that. Because all four Imams and many, many, many scholars, all the majority of those scholars, even Ibn Taymiyyah, who we've mentioned, has some issues. Even he's in the Sawaf, he follows a Sufi path, Ibn Taymiyyah himself. So yeah, the scholars are, I mean, we'll answer that next week, inshallah, in more detail. And uh, a question from myself, um, I'm sure you'll just say, you know, find a sheikh in Tazawaf, you know, read the books, etc. But if any advice from yourself, how can you be gentle but firm at the same time? That's the soul teaching you that. Do you have any, just... That's my answer. Any, anything, even a two be, be at the prophet. Learn from the prophet. Read the seerah of the prophet. See how he was with his with his own to, to be to be interacted with and be like that. But how to be like the prophet is the soul. That's what teaches you. Okay. There's no uh, uh, just eat you got answers. You know, there's a word. I can ask one more. Um, what are the differences in the tariqas and why is it why is there not just one tariqa like? That's next week. Okay. And if you take a different tariqa, is the outcome different? Or do you still reach the same? Uh, they say that the, the, um, the paths to Allah are, are uh, the path to Allah is many, but the, the path away from Allah is one. There are many ways to come close to Allah. There's only one way to become distant from Allah, which is sin. Mm. We all need to Allah. Like the Malahim. We all need to Allah. Ash'ayis, Ma'adiris, Ahl Hadith. We all need to Allah. And spirituality, because there are so many human states, each tariqa or madhhab, if you want to call it that, we can talk about next week, has a particular way. Uh, just follow, just to add to that, um, do you know like when you, do you know like before everybody came to university, if you was a bit of like, if you were a bit of a nerd and you know, you wanted to go to a good uni and this, that, you did your research in it and you sort of looked at uni rankings and you looked at this and you looked at that, do you know if you were to pick a tariqa to join or to 
come to is they're like rankings or like you know what I mean? Like how do you um with with this Conditions to, um, for, for a sheikh, they're very strict, by the way, very strict conditions. Because uh, there's a lot of uh, heretics that, um, involved in this, sadly. Like in the Aqidah, there's people who claim things about Allah, and they're heretics. There's people who claim things about Hadith that, like, that, that are not true. And then people claim things about the Quran. Every science has its, has its, its lunatics and heretics. And to so has, has its, also its. Uh, Whatever, heretics and lunatics. There's an English the whole science by them. Well, there are conditions that you follow. The article to this, uh, I'll just, you'll get it next week. Um, it's recommended reading, inshallah. If you want to know more, it's a sheikh called Sheikh Nuh Keller. Okay. Yeah, the last book that we read in his body. Just, just uh, quickly finish. Um, what's it called? Um, you know how you talked about like sunnah and ijazah in the past lectures? Uh -huh. well, like, the last lecture of this semester, we're going to have a whole lecture on that. But yeah, the same yeah. thing applies here. So, will these people who have reached this level of piety, will they have like a written certificate? Oh, of course, of course. Oh, I thought like you wouldn't be able to see that because there's no, no written. Their sheikh, their sheikh, and the sheikh before, and the sheikh before, you know, not to be a sheikh of a soul of a dhariqa, the sheikh before you have to give you ijazah, and the sheikh doesn't give you the ijazah unless you purify, you see your harassment, mashallah, transform immediately. That's why there's not many around. Okay. Learning a book of fiqh or aqidah or doing a course, you can get a certificate at the end of the year. This is not something simple. You don't get a certificate in the, in the multitude for this type of stuff, this type of thing. Yeah. Taha, sorry, I know you want to ask something, but do you know the person who asked, um, does the four madahibs, like what did they say about being a Sufi? And you said next lecture, inshallah. They're, they're basically saying, um, the question now is, so would you consider those four main scholars as Sufi? And is there any living people who are Sufis we should take from? Yes, and the words of the four Imams will tell you what they think of it. Um, yes, they were people for soul, definitely were. For soul, as we mentioned next week, for soul was a, it was an undeniable. Yeah, uh, this uh, person might have missed the statement from Imam Malik. So the, man, yeah, that, so that's why. Tell to look back at the statement from the man. You know, other statements, which I'll give you next week. And are there people? Yes. Yes, they are. Yes, I've, I've been fortunate enough to meet them. Check in the UK. Do you think any? They feel they come to visit. Oh no! Do you there's think there's any that? Yeah, that? there's people like that in Morocco. People like that in Pakistan. There's, there's people, but um, you've got like with anything, you have to know what you look for. Yeah. So these these people do exist. They do exist. There, there. Any names? Hmm. Abi Tabi. No. Really? No. Ah. You know Sheikh Khalifa. Hmm? Where'd you get that from? Who does he told you that? Wait, who are you talking about? I'm talking about the same person. Who told you that? I just told you. Just keep quiet. You don't know who you're talking about. Show his love. Show his love. He doesn't claim to be either. You don't know who you're talking about the way he sounds. Who are you talking about? You have to ask him. God has me. <laughs> just any names you know of anybody? Uh, you mean Sheikh of Tariqa? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's Sheikh Noor Kala, there's uh, Hayy Umar bin Habib, there's Sheikh Muhammad al Yaqubi. There's the ones off the top of my head that I, I can think of. In, in, in the Middle East, there's many. I don't know them, to be honest, yeah, yeah. but they are there. Um, the, the state of Tariqa, so we'll talk about it next week. The Shahwis, the Chispis, the Alawis, uh, um, the Qadris, there's a whole bunch of different tariqas that exist. Uh, Nakhshibandis, there's different Nakhshibandis, but I'm going to go look. Just try to find a few. Thanks. Uh, anyway, so yes. There's nothing wrong with celebrating the Shahwis. Uh, 
based on the intention. If not, if by me showing up here, I can go better than everybody else, it's kind of they think that that's like a the nice result that you can use to get better than everybody else. It's not that we're celebrating one's achievements. If you think your achievements place you over and above people who have who don't have the same achievements, that's a problem. Understand that, right? What call do you do? <laughs> so let's take that example. You and your course, and somebody introduces themselves, uh, I'm doing art. <coughs> What are they going to do with that? What kind of job are they going to get with that? That's the idea. Arrogance. Why? But essentially, you're saying, I'm better than them because I'm doing a better course. Essentially, that's what it is. You dig down, you kind of sit down with a piece of paper, unpack, 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 peel back all the layers of the onion. As people say, you'll find, ah, at the bottom, oh, right at the bottom, I'm better. And then, I love it. I left me in Nag, I left him I'm better than him. You created me from fire, Shaitan, and you created him from clay. And I think back to that. No, 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 there's nothing wrong. But just don't, don't think that just because they have that, they're better than other people. That's all I'm asking. You can celebrate if you're happy. You can have graduations. You can have set, you know, set, you can celebrate, you can celebrate. MashaAllah, let everyone celebrate. Just don't make a celebration that you're better than everybody else. That's why we just avoid that. We, just, we celebrate with Muslim. That doesn't mean, you know. Ah, uh, tunnel. I'm assuming that to be saying, to the pastor, carry the hand. Yes. That's a very important point. I didn't, maybe I didn't. Was it clear enough? Was it clear? Clear to you, maybe not to these people, but I don't know us. So those who are advisories should be people of Sharia and people of spirituality. More so in those positions, more so. Because you don't want to be swayed by the money and by the prestige. Sincerity there has to be of the utmost level in those jobs. And you're advising people. Which is why uh, scholars like Imam al and others have warned against people, scholars being close to leaders because that very issue of sincerity. We don't want, we don't want that. But it doesn't mean that we don't, that uh, religious scholars who are sincere and have mastered their egos, they're the best people to advise leaders. They're the best people. Right? Who else better to advise leaders than those who have the sharia and have mastered their ego? They're sincere. They don't fear. They talk about fear, right? They talk about fear. You don't fear anybody, fear Allah. That's the best people to advise leaders. And that's who leaders should take as people of advice. Good question. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that. Uh, uh, you mentioned that. There's, uh, you mentioned that. So you opinion people that are still part of that because you have all that man. Um, do those people still like, constantly question their intentions and stuff like that? You know, the basic stuff that we're going to be talking about. Do they still do that? Definitely. It's always uh, in a state of the morale and rushing and so on. It's just become arguably a uh, habit for them now. They habituate the egos you know, to try to uh, be sincere, to train themselves to be sincere. Long time and hard work and talking from our hearts. Next question. Anyone? Next question? Ah. Okay, Farhan. Just to back again. Okay. Uh, a viewer asked, a viewer asked, what's the definition of the soul? I think 
Linda, the slides. Yeah. Good, good manners. Yeah. Good manners. Another viewer asked, may I know the base name and the pixel property to allow for the differentiation? Next week, we'll look into that a bit more. This is like an introduction to the whole topic. I didn't finish, I've got maybe 20 more pages left for that, and then we'll probably even next week we'll end up um, going to the next. Uh, is that it? Uh, I've got one more question to ask. Oh, no. but, uh, I can't even, I can't find it actually in the stream. How many viewers do you have here? Six, seven, around six, six, four. Uh, Abu Bakr, send your question please again. Give him a second to just type his question. Okay. Anybody else? Why is it finding a question? How's our topic today? The evolution. So just to uh, understand the background behind it before we actually try to find out what, how do we obtain this result? Very different to what people in mind. Different to the uh, transaction and how we use the subsidiary to stop it. The stigma behind it. The stigma and misconception of the um, I think Islam is terrorism and Sufism is bid'ah. They're probably the biggest misconceptions come across right now. That's where it's difficult. But I was going to yeah. say, um, one of the viewers has said that you laughed at their question. He's asking if my Say that again? One of the viewers that was asking what does Tawassal mean? He's asking why, also, yeah, why did you laugh? Is my question too simple? We didn't say about Tawassal today. Exactly. Tawassal. Tawassal. Tawassal, sorry. Uh, what was the question again? What's the definition of Tawassal? Ah, uh, because we spoke about it this evening. Yeah. That's why I was they're laughing. Just, they're just a bit hurt. Ah, uh, we spoke about it today. They got the slides. Go back for any aspect like you know, a couple of hours talking about it. It, it, it was the slide, it's, it's there. Uh, please pay attention and go back to the slides. If you come late, you're excused. If you've been there from the beginning, I have to ask you what have you been doing? So I spoke about it. Uh, sorry if I hurt your feelings. So for some people, they tend to discuss this sort of uh, topic with young people so they learn a lot more, right? Or they might be in a limbo situation where they don't know that's another song or These people that listen to me weren't of this, uh, they weren't what I was listening to, right? So, is there anybody that you require, that you advise listening to online for general, you know, scripted videos or no videos that are just about Islam or these sort of things? Uh, who would you advise uh, listening to? Um, next up, names? Yeah, names. Online, I think Shah Hamza is just really good. Yeah, I think Shah Hamza is just a really good. I've always found it really good. Um, yeah, you know, Shah Hamza is just, mashallah, on this stuff. And um, on which topic actually? Um, so, for example, people look at like some history or see. Sheikh Noah Kala is 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 pretty good. <coughs> Sheikh Hamza is good. Imam Zayd is good. I find him very good. After Hakim Murad in the UK <coughs> is 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 obviously pretty good. Sheikh Noah Kala I mentioned as well. Um, for people who kind of who are uh, of, of that kind of um, traditional follow method. Follow Aqida, Karaka Aqida, Shari, Madis, Ahl Hadith, or Ahli, the Karaka in Spanish, don't follow some kind of spiritual path. These are people who are wide range of Islam, basically. Look at the credentials. Somebody from the live stream asks Do you have to follow Sufism to have Ihsan? Interesting question. Can the person tell me how to how to reach a station or how to worship Allah as we see him? Without the salat? That's my question. Uh, ummah, historically, have, uh, the way to do that, the ummah, the scholars, how they have the, the way to achieve that is through spirit, is through the soul, historically. That's a fact. So there's no other way, basically, right? No other systemized, categorized way to do it. How can you name your fiqh without a method? How can you name your aqidah without looking at the scores of aqidah? How can you learn to reach that state unless you follow the commands? You have to 
and we left the estate that Brian and Father in our footsteps, and that's been the ones we've sold. Anything else? Cross? I bet you are all passionate out. Great. Cross, we will end on that. Next week we'll continue. I think how many? Let's see. Literally.